Welcome to the sermon podcast for First St. Charles United Methodist Church in downtown St. Charles, Missouri. We are so glad that you're here, and it's our prayer that you feel safe, welcome, and wanted in this space. If you're interested in finding out more about us or supporting our ministries, you can connect with us online at firststcharlesumc.org. Today's scripture comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 10. I am sending you out like sheep into the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of them, for they will hand you over to the councils and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings because of me, as a testimony to them and the Gentiles. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say, For you are to say what will be given to you at the time, for it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. This is God's Word, living and growing in us. Glory be to God. I want to share a true story with you about a boy named Eugene. Eugene's faith journey really didn't start till he was about 14, or so we think. Eugene was raised in a loving home, but it wasn't a Christian home. The family only went to church once a year at Easter. So church and faith were not familiar to him. When he was in the fourth grade, his teacher did something no teacher would ever do today. She invited her class to go to church with her. She always attended Wednesday night services at the local Baptist church and took whoever wanted to go with her. It was during one of those Wednesday night services that God spoke to young Eugene in one of those sacred moments, and he answered the altar call. This was a time when God was planting seeds of faith. Unfortunately, after leaving the fourth grade, Eugene once again quit going to church. When Eugene was 14, his family moved to the same part of town where his cousin lived. His cousin invited him to go to church with her. At first, it was just fun being with his cousin and doing activities with the kids at youth group. However, it was during one of those times of fun that God's prevenient grace was at work once again, inviting young Eugene into a relationship with the Lord. Prevenient grace is the grace that goes before us. It is God reaching out to us before we even know God is there. It is that first step that God takes towards inviting us into a relationship with the Lord. That is what young Eugene was experiencing at that time and in that place. Eugene liked church, and he felt welcome and wanted there, but in many ways he also felt like a visitor. And then one day Eugene decided it was time for him to make a decision about his faith. Was he going to continue to be a visitor, or was he going to make a commitment? He decided it was time that he say what he believed by taking the vows of church membership. But first he needed to be baptized. So at the age of 16, with his aunt standing next to him, Eugene was baptized and accepted as a member of the church family. And for the first time, he felt like he truly belonged. Eugene felt God's love like he had never felt it before. As you might guess, this is my story and my middle name is Eugene. I wanted to share this story with you because I think it illustrates the fact that all of us come to faith in different ways, through different experiences, through different acquaintances. In our journey in faith takes many twists and turns and can be pretty bumpy at times. My journey was anything but smooth. There was a time in my 20s when I didn't go to church for three or four years, and it took a devastating experience to draw me back to God. A journey in faith can be very complex. Last week, we started a new sermon series called Fourfold Spiritual Growth. Pastor Bart preached about simplicity, and today I get to talk about complexity. Several years ago, I purchased a book written by the great baseball player Yogi Berra titled, When You Come to a Fork in the Road, Take It. I even had the rare opportunity to have Yogi himself sign it. Now, you might not think of Yogi Bear as particularly a wise man, but in his own way, he really was. Or at least one might get that opinion if you read his book. Now, Yogi is certainly no Solomon. In fact, Solomon would probably shake his head at some of Yogi's sayings if he could. 
Listen to a few of them taken from the book. Slump? I ain't in no slump. I just ain't hitting. If people don't want to come out to the park, nobody's going to stop them. If you don't know where you're going, you might not get there. You can observe a lot by watching. It's deja vu all over again. A nickel ain't worth a dime anymore. If I didn't wake up, I'd still be sleeping. Nobody goes there anymore. It's too crowded. Always go to other people's funerals. Otherwise, they won't go to yours. Those sayings are actual, actual titles to the chapters in this book. Now, I would readily admit that for the most part, they're pretty goofy. And if you just read the table of contents, you would probably think he's some kind of a nut. But listen to the opening paragraph. Throughout life, you come to serious forks in the road. Decisions. Which path do you choose? Sometimes it's tough. People are always afraid of making the wrong choice. But no matter what decision you make, taking a job, getting married, buying a house, whatever it is, you shouldn't look back. Trust your instincts. How many times have you traveled through life and come to a fork in the road and ignored it? How many times have you taken the wrong path because it was something you wanted and not necessarily what God wanted for you? I was at that crossroad at one point in my life. I was a faithful member of this church, and I thought I knew what I wanted to do. I thought I knew what God wanted me to do, until I didn't. I never planned on being a pastor. It came as a surprise to me, and believe me, it came as a surprise to my wife, Bridget, also. Brian D. McLaren, the author of Faith After Doubt, had this very same dilemma. He had never planned on being a pastor. And in his book, he quotes Bryant Russ that sums up his journey of faith in mine. And he said, It was like I'd been reading the sheet music all my life, but had never heard the song. My simple faith journey had become very complex. I was afraid. Could I do it? Could we afford the reduction in my wages? How would I do in seminary? All of a sudden, the complexity of the situation created doubts and fears. Doubt is a companion that will never go away. Paul Tillich once said that doubt isn't the opposite of faith. It's an element of faith. Let me repeat that. Doubt isn't the opposite of faith. It is an element of faith. I had questions, and I doubt if there's anyone here with us in person or online that haven't had questions regarding faith. Kevin Nile reminds us, in the Gospels, Jesus is asked 187 questions. He answers maybe eight of them. He himself asked 307 questions. Maybe faith isn't about certainty, but learning to ask and sit in the complexity of good questions. And that's what I did. One day I met with Reverend Marvin Pyron, who was the pastor of this church at the time, and we talked about my journey. He told me to go into the sanctuary and with open hands ask God about what I should do. And so I sat in this empty sanctuary, focused on the very cross behind me, and asked that question. I like what Walt Whitman said about doubt and decision making. He said, I like the scientific spirit, the holding off, the being sure but not too sure, the willingness to surrender ideas when the evidence is against them. This is ultimately fine. It always keeps the way beyond open, always gives life, thought, affection, the whole man, a chance to try over again after a mistake, after a wrong guess. And we do make mistakes in our faith journey, don't we? And sometimes the fear of making a decision can paralyze us. Former President Ronald Reagan once had an aunt who took him to the cobbler for a new pair of shoes. The cobbler asked young Reagan, do you want square toes or round toes? Unable to decide, Reagan didn't answer, so the cobbler gave him a few days. Several days later, the cobbler saw Reagan on the street 
and asked him again what kind of toes he wanted on his shoes. Reagan still couldn't decide, so the shoemaker replied, well, come by in a couple of days. Your shoes will be ready. When the future president did so, he found one square-toed and one round-toed shoe. This will teach you to never let people make decisions for you, the cobbler said to his indecisive customer. I learned right then and there, Reagan said later, if you don't make your own decisions, someone else will. Does the complexity of faith of which way to go on your faith journey cause you to be indecisive? Are you afraid to ask questions? Although our spiritual journeys can be very complex, they can also be freeing. Free to question and doubt. Free to move outside some well-intentioned boundaries that may keep you from growing. That can be very exciting, but it could also be very exhausting. And whether we realize it or not, we have all wrestled with God at one time or another. We wrestle with God when things happen and we want to know why they happen that way. We have wrestled with God trying to understand what God would have us to do with our lives spiritually. We have wrestled with God over the things God has asked us to give up. We have all wrestled with God in one way or another. Sometimes our faith journey becomes complex because we don't open ourselves up to new ideas or new revelations. We can get to a point where we think we know it all. After all, we've been going to church for what seems like forever. We go to Sunday school. Maybe we're in a small group. We've read the Bible through and pray somewhat regularly. Well, when I walked into my first class in seminary on the Old Testament, I thought I knew the Bible pretty well. After all, I'd read it cover to cover at least two or three times. We attended this church regularly. We were part of a Sunday school class that Bridget helped teach. I mean, what more could we do? And so I walked into my first class in seminary of the Old Testament thinking I knew a lot. Needless to say, I had a rude awakening when I discovered I didn't know as much as I thought. As I think about the passage from Matthew that was read just a few minutes ago, I hear Jesus say to be on guard, that the journey won't be an easy one. Following him will take us to hard places at times. Be ready. When you get comfortable in your faith journey, you might find that you don't study as much as you used to. You quit asking questions and searching for the hard answers. A journey of faith is too complex to stand still and stop growing. When I drifted away from the church for several years, I was too comfortable with my life. There was nothing complex about it until I experienced a life-changing, devastating event. And the only way I was able to handle those changes was to return to a life of faith. And I gave myself back to God and never looked back. John Powell is a university professor, and he tells this story in Chicken Soup for the Christian Soul. And he says, some years ago, 14 years ago, in fact, I stood watching my university students file into the classroom for the opening session in my Theology of Faith class. That was the first day I saw Tommy. Tommy turned out to be the atheist in residence in my course. He constantly objected or to or smirked at the possibility of an unconditionally loving God. We lived in relative peace for one semester, although at times he was a pain in the back pew. At the end of the course, when he turned in his final exam, he asked in a slightly cynical tone, do you ever think I'll find God? I decided on a little shock therapy. No, I said deliberately. Oh, he responded, I thought that was the product you were pushing. I let him get five steps from the door and then called out, Tommy, I am not sure you will ever find God, but I am certain that God will find you. Tommy just shrugged and left, and I felt slightly disappointed that he had missed my clever line. Later, I heard that Tommy had graduated, and I was duly grateful. And then came a sad report. Tommy had terminal cancer. Before I could search him out, he came to me. 
When he walked into my office, his body was badly wasted because of chemotherapy. But his eyes were bright and his voice was firm for the first time in a long time. Tommy, I've thought about you so often. I hear you are sick, I blurted out. Oh yes, very sick. I have cancer. It's a matter of weeks. Well, can you talk about it? Sure, what would you like to know? Well, what's it like to be 24 and know you are dying? Well, it could be worse. Well, like what? Well, like being 50 and having no values or ideals. Like being 50 and thinking that booze, seducing women, and making money are the real biggies in life. But what I really came to see you about is something you said to me on the last day of class. I asked if you ever thought I would find God, and you said no, which surprised me. Then you said, but God will find you. I thought about that a lot, even though my search was hardly intense at that time. But when the doctors removed a lump from my groin and told me it was malignant, I got serious about locating God. And when the malignancy spread to my vital organs, I really began banging on the doors of heaven. But nothing happened. Well, one day I woke up, and instead of throwing a few more futile appeals to a God who may or may not exist, I just quit. I decided I didn't care about God and the afterlife or anything else for that matter. I decided to spend what time I had left doing something more profitable. I thought about you and something you had said in one of your lectures. The essential sadness is to go through life without loving. But it would be equally sad to leave this world without telling those you love that you have loved them. So I began with the hardest one, my dad. When I told him I loved him, he did two things I couldn't remember him doing before. He cried and he hugged me. We walked, talked all night even though he had to go to work the next day. It was much easier with my little brother and my mother. Here I was in the shadow of death and I was just beginning to open up to all the people I had actually been close to. And then one day I turned around and God was there. God didn't come to me when I pleaded. Apparently God does things the way God wants to. The important thing is you were right. God found me even after I stopped looking. As we travel through this complex journey of faith, we should recognize that our God is a God that will not let us go. God will chase us to the ends of the earth and in love make sure that we have the opportunity to hear that still small voice. And when the journey gets tough, I try to remember the last words of John Wesley when he said the best of all, God is with us. Amen.